Hello everyone and welcome to Camping with Lenny. In this episode, I'm off to Rock Point Provincial Park for a three days, two nights camping trip. <music> It is day one and it's quarter to 1 p.m. and I'm off to Rock Point Provincial Park. Uh, according to the GPS, I should be there around 2.11, so an hour and 27 minutes. Oh man, it's going to be a long drive, but uh, no, I can't wait to go. It's going to be a fantastic uh, week. Weather-wise, it's going to be... Um, Roughly about 20 to 25 degrees C, so it's going to be a nice and comfortable at night. Um, according to the uh, the weather channel, the net net weather network, it's supposed to go down roughly about a balmy 15 degrees, so it's not bad at all. Uh, but uh, we'll see what uh, what in store for us. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Oh, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room. So today is supposed to get a, uh, a beautiful thunder showers all day, all evening, all afternoon. During my setup time, I was hoping to have a window uh, between now and uh, this evening, but uh, according, again, according to Windy and the, the Weather Net Channel, sorry, network, Weather Network, because in Canada. Uh, it's supposed to be raining on and off until 6, 7 o'clock tonight. So that actually changed my plan, sort of, how I'm going to set up the campsite. I'm planning to set up a tarp today, for tonight. Uh, at least, just, So if it rains, at least covered. I'm covered. I have places to eat and all that good stuff. But, um, again, depending on the, um, the severity of the rain coming down... I might just use my shelter that I have with me. I'll just use that and um, and use that for now. I'm not pretty sure. But unfortunately, the shelter that I have is not weatherproof. It's not rainproof. It's just a sunshade. <laughs> so I'm kind of like in the fence right now. So I might end up just setting up the tarp anyway. Just for uh, just to make it easier for me. Uh, it's bigger too, so I, don't, I can just walk around it pretty easily. But uh, no, that's the um, that's the elephant in the room now. But tomorrow, and uh, the following day, because I'm gonna be gone for three days, two nights. It's supposed to be beautiful tomorrow and the next day. <laughs> so uh, it's gonna, just gonna be a very interesting um, night uh, in the afternoon as well too. I was planning to leave, actually leave early. I contact the park. Um, this morning they said, "Oh, the um, the site is free, so come down anytime." So funny story, I forgot my towel and a measuring cup because I need the measuring cup for tonight's dinner, and well, dinner for the rest of the night. So I ended up going to Canadian Tire to grab something there, and I was about to leave to head to the highway. I forgot I forgot my towel to you know to use when I take a shower. So that um, so I ended up going home grabbing it I'm just glad that I'm only like 10 minutes away from uh, away from the house uh, so that's why I have to go back and grab it so it's not bad and of course there's always an end uh, when I was buying ice I accidentally took the keys with me for the ice box from the gas station so I had to drive back to the gas station so it's been <laughs> an interesting start of the journey of this camping trip so I'm hoping that's it for the uh, for the mishap for the rest of the trip Hopefully it's going to be a nice, uh, comfortable, um, relaxing, uh, you know, camping. It is 2.30 p.m. I just finished checking in. I'm heading to the campsite now. The good news is, well, a few things. One was driving down. It's just completely like rain, rain, soaking rain. 
Now, after checking in, well, I was checking in, I was just like drenched. Um, apparently, they do something different here. Typical, typically, uh, in provincial parks, you go um, check, park your car, check in, drive out, right? This one is like a drive through thing, so that's a new thing to me. Um, now I'm heading to the campsite. Um, yeah, apparently the driveway is very lo uh, long. Uh, the, the wood is actually located in the uh, store, and the store closes at 4. So if you're going to come here, just be aware that the store does close at 4. So if you need wood, that's the only thing. I'm heading to my site now. So far, people here usually have tractor, uh, like, RVs, so no tent. Um, now the biggest word I have is just the site is going to be incredibly wet. Um, that's the biggest thing I'm kind of worried about. Uh, the the site here is um, pretty spaced out actually. I was very very impressed how spaced out the place so far. It's very well organized. It's very clean. It feels like this park is brand new. Um, it's not as clearly labeled as. Uh, Port Barwell is but uh, so far I'm liking the layout here if you're planning to go have um, um, if you plan to have if you plan to bring friends here to go camping you can actually have sites that's just across each other and you have a clear line of sight so that's pretty neat um, I'm heading towards my site right now the uh, the direction is keep going south until you hit uh, a T and turn left. So that's what I'm planning to do. I hit the T and I'm turning left. Uh, okay, there's washrooms here. As far as I know, the washroom I uh, the sites that I have is pretty walking distance to the to the bathroom and to the to the faucet. So drinking water. So 58. I have a park here. Don't tell me but this is 58. I'm going to 59, so just a little down. Oh man, looks like it is wet. I am not looking forward to this at all. Oh man. Uh, this is, I presume, 59. Uh, 59 is here. Oh man, it is pretty wet, epically wet. Uh, let me park the car and see i might just go to the one to the washroom first because oh man it is muddy so i'm just gonna park the car for now and uh head to the bathroom uh to see what's uh what else is out here i'll be back it is 2 39 i just came back from the bathroom the bathroom was pretty interesting it's a, <laughs> everything's a completely different layout than what i'm used to the bathroom is actually um, uh, uh, multi-use, in other words, uh, not multi-use, strong word I'm using. It's uh, gender neutral, so you can, uh, it's a, it's a mixed use bathroom. The showers are massive. Uh, it's designed for people with, uh, with disabilities, so this is actually pretty good for disability access, right? So that's pretty good. Um, so. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my camp first before it's supposed to rain. Currently, it's pretty sunny right now. Uh, sorry, my neighbors are coming in. It's pretty sunny right now. Uh, the rain should dissipate and it should dry up the um, this area. But uh, the fire has a puddle of water, and everything else is pretty muddy. Uh, I'm gonna take a photo after I set up. Actually, I'm gonna take a photo right now. To see, to show you guys how bad it is, because it's uh, pretty bad. Like, oh uh, man, it's pretty bad. It's very, very muddy. The um, even the uh, water, uh, the where the fire is, it's very, very muddy. You know, just let me see it here. The good news is there is a section of the site that's actually higher grade. So I'm going to put my tarp and my tent up in that side. But first I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to set up the tarp because I don't want to, um, just in case it rains again, <laughs> at least I'm covered. Uh, because I just don't want to 
be caught in the rain. It is, again, the sun is out, but it's been peeking in and out. It does not mean it's gonna rain or stop raining. So just to cover myself, I'm just gonna set up the, uh, the, the tarp for now. At least I'm good. And uh, tomorrow, if it's uh, sunny, I'll take it back down. So, yeah, let me set up the tarp. I'll take photos throughout the uh, whole setup process so I can post it in the uh, in Instagram. By the way, I do have an Instagram account now and also uh, Twitter, so I'm gonna start using that slowly. But I'm gonna put everything on the website for now. Okay, I'll be back. It's 3.09 p.m. I finally got the, um, the camping tarp up and uh, I just checked the weather. It's actually very sunny today uh, for the rest of the night. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the tarp up tonight just to have some shelter tomorrow. Um, I don't know how long this is gonna last. I might pin, might put a little bit more guidelines to the system itself just to prevent some thing. Um, originally I was thinking about putting the uh, the back part of the tarp in the tent itself. I still might do that depending on how I feel after. Uh, just to get this out of the way. Oh. So I can actually do a test in the vestibule of the, of the tent because my tent doesn't have a vestibule. My Gazelle T4. So I'm going to do is going to set up the uh, the ground now I'm just gonna do a walkthrough but first just remember if before you start putting your tent up make sure there's no debris here that can actually make your life a lot harder when you step in the ground so always check your sight before you do anything so you won't hit hurt your feet when you're walking around your tent so yeah, I'll get back to you guys. Let me just set up the tent. It is 3.19 p.m. Shelter is up. Tent is up. The tarp is up. The tent is up. The only thing I have to do is um, move stuff in. Typically, I don't even put the, uh, the, the tarp up because it's going to rain. I decided to put it up. A um, couple of things that I do want to address and change. Uh, one is the... Um, the tarp itself. I am going to put down the back part of the tarp downwards so the rain will actually, um, you know, goes out of the tarp itself. All its purpose is just going to make it really low so it's just going to be beat out. Um, the other one as well too, the, um, the weather itself is supposed to rain around 6 p.m. tonight again according to this area. So right now it's sunny so it's very deceiving. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish off the shelter, but first I'm going to grab a beer. I'm parched. <laughs> so beer is good. Time for beer clock. Today's beer, I'm having something called Shark Land Shark Lager. I had this a few weeks ago and it was delicious. So I'm having it again for this trip because it's going to be humid and hot for the next few days. So might as well hydrated yeah um, now I officially have a, um, a vestibule I am gonna move the tent back a bit so I can now um, have more area to sit on but first also and first well second after the beer is sorry after second beer I'm gonna get the thermostat up and running because it's humid and I don't want any buggies around me so I'm going to get the uh, thermostat up and running. I bought a few pads of this uh, a few weeks ago because I went for a family beach day. I brought my thermostat just in case it gets uh, mosquito-ish at the beach area. This is Toronto Beach. You don't know what's actually going to happen. So I brought it with me just in case. So I'm gonna have that. Um, so let's start with. Also, as soon as I get the shelter where it's supposed to be and set up, I'm gonna start burning the. Um, I'm gonna start the fire. Get that starting. Uh, hopefully around six. The light does. The sun does go down early this time of year. 
so I do need to compensate on my lighting situation my fire situation typically I don't do fire until like later on because of the um, mosquitoes and the uh, humidity and lack of light certain as soon as you hit a certain time it's going to be hard to start the fire so I'm going to finish this shelter set up get where it's supposed to be finalize it then um, then I'll start the fire but first thermosel you can't go wrong with thermosel one of my new favorite gadgets I am going to do a review on this one because I do I think it deserves a good um, review on this because it's it's one of my favorite things actually in, uh, in, uh, it's, uh, in camping right now I don't have to worry about uh, bug spray I don't have to worry about um, stuff this one's just it just works so I'm gonna start with this um, this on is it's pretty neat system it does work well you can actually hear the cicada, cicadas right now they're incredibly loud uh, hopefully it goes away this evening but uh, we'll see how that's gonna work out uh, but for now we're just gonna leave the cicadas alone and um, just enjoy time in nature um, yeah because uh, right now I'm getting a little rashes actually it's kind of weird but uh, start this yeah there you go I fired up so I'm gonna put this in the picnic table for now and get this guy up and running and have some beer move my tent back a bit and have a proper um, uh, vestibule just in case it rain at six according to the weather network okay okay so I'm gonna catch you guys later let me just move this thing out of the way it's uh, 3 34 p.m. the shelter is done the tent and the and the awning or the the tarp is done so what I did is um, I made a makeshift um, awning or vestibule for the T4 because unfortunately T4 does not come with an awning or not even an option to have an awning so it's kind of ridiculous but anywho um, I'm done with ranting on that one but uh, what I did is um, I put a um, tarp like a camping tarp uh, put it in the uh, just above just on top of the uh, of the of the gazelle and just drip it on top of it and use poles to lift it up I ended up putting a pole in both four corners. The reason why is just to give a little bit more uh, rain protection going into tonight's rainy portion of the event around six apparently. Uh, again, I don't know when that's actually going to happen. Uh, food wise, um, again, the fire is drenched right now with water. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Um, I might just have to burn the wood now and just clean up the air and dry the area as much as I can. Good news, I'm not using the uh, the fire pit tonight for cooking. That'll be more tomorrow. I'm hoping this will dry up overnight. I'm really hoping it does dry up. If it doesn't dry up, then I'll go for plan B. This means I have to cook everything on the stove. But uh, again, we'll see how this is going to work out. The tent is not really in the middle of the gazebo. That's fine. Um, I'm not worried about getting this thing getting wet at all. No, because it is waterproof already. I sprayed the silicone thing. And I wish I shifted to the left or to the right, depending on your point of view, to the center of the, the awning, the center of the tarp. But uh, it is what it is. Um, Typically, I'm already done by now, <laughs> but having the uh, the tarp on top because of the potential rain is the uh, the problematic. I might do for next time on October when I go camping again. Is I'm gonna get some bungee cords. I'm gonna bungee it right in the uh, connection, the steel part of like the like at the back or attached to the tent itself, 
and use two poles to, to, to bring it up. And um, I think that will work perfectly. Uh, the only thing I have to make sure that the I put a guide at the back, like I uh, put um, uh, like a, a guideline at the back so it doesn't pull the tent forward. <laughs> if that's the case, that's just going to be bad. But uh, I think that's what I'm going to do next time. I'm going to get um, uh, paracord. I have some paracord. I'll make a small one and just just use a small one and just attach it to the corners the one in the back center one in the uh, there's a connection as well too and use that as a starting point um that will speed up the um that will make a makeshift um awning or a makeshift vestibule for the uh for the t4 um if i do that the setup shouldn't take me that long to set up it's just another probably another five minutes to put it up having the um the tarp up like this takes took me about 20 minutes to put it up because uh, again the uh, ground is incredibly muddy I was slipping sliding all over the place and um, yeah so it's gonna be a very messy night tonight uh, cooking wise I still don't know what I'm gonna do for cooking well good news is I can actually cook everything on my stove um, I brought uh, ready meals tonight because I knew it's gonna rain so I might go that route going forward but again, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this works out. Uh, I'm gonna finish setting up the um, the inside of the tent so I can, uh, just in case it rains, at least I have something to start with. It's 3.58 p.m. Setup is done. The only thing left is to crack another beer and also get some snackies because I'm tired. I'm extremely exhausted, so I'm gonna open some beers first. After that, I'm gonna start a fire, close the trunk for a bit and just rest for a bit. Um, so just a change of pace here. So a couple of things that uh, needs to be addressed here. Uh, addressed in the uh, sort of way that, yeah, it's just to address the, um, the setup itself, just looking back in the setup. I'm doing that now. <laughs> so the setup itself was pretty harmless. Again, cicadas, you're hearing cicadas. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that. It is what it is. The ground is incredibly muddy after the rain. Um, if make a mental note, if you're planning to be here, look for something that's a little grassy. Uh, there is a beach here that I can walk to, but uh, we'll see if I can actually make it to the beach today. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to rest for a bit. The The water that's surrounding the, the fire pit is going down. That's good. Uh, but um, it's still wet. Uh, according to the weather forecast, it's supposed to rain all night, uh, tonight, this, afternoon, this evening actually, around six and tonight. Uh, but I do want to burn the wood, uh, the fire pit a bit more just to clean it up a bit, ready for tomorrow. Um, because I knew going into this uh, camping trip is supposed to rain all weekend, uh, not all weekends, or all week. So my meals were designed so I can actually eat it in a frying pan. So there's a backup, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, the picnic tables is away, away from me, so I might move that closer to me, just in case I need it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a photo, uh, show you guys what it looks like, but for now I'm just gonna rest for a bit. It's been a long hour setting all this up. Um, I do have a plan now to have a awning or a vestibule for the gazelle using the existing tarp and using two poles. So that's gonna be experimenting for the next camping trip in October. I am planning to see if I can go to another camping trip uh, in like in two or three weeks from now, just to, um, just to, get some content up and running just get maximize my camping before winter actually officially hits it is 4 44 p.m and my wish come through cell signal here is practically non-existing and uh, and it's great i i was trying to call the wifey we keep getting in and out because there's really no signal here and um yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's, and 
I've been wandering around here a bit. Um, I can actually hear against the cicadas. I'm gonna keep mentioning that because it's driving me crazy. And also the um, Lake Erie. You can actually hear Lake Erie from here. So uh, tomorrow, I'm actually gonna head over there tomorrow to do a little hiking because there is a uh, path starting like literally next door to me to head to the lake. So I'm gonna check that out and see what's actually out there. There's also a beach as well too, so I might head down there if the temperature is hot and just take a bath, take a uh, swim in the lake and just put my feet up. We'll see and uh, go from there. But yeah, no, uh, there's no cell, cell signal here and there's no data as well too, so I did not download any music. <laughs> so that's awesome. So um, I'll be, uh, I can't even watch Netflix or, or any streaming. So that's kind of nice too, but uh, it is pretty weird. Oh, well, that's life. That's what happens if you're, you know, camping. You're supposed to be disconnected to everything else. And being disconnected is good. So just saying, be disconnected and be happy with it. Uh, fire is doing really well. Um, fire is doing really really well uh, it is crackling so that's good uh, the fire is getting hot um, yeah I'm gonna keep letting it go I'm um, just no point for me to um, to see yeah again it's just to make it hot right and you got a bunch of loud exhaust happening and so was the case um, I also brought myself my GPS uh, with me because uh, there is a barometric pressure in my GPS. The uh, reason why I took it, I uh, have it with me is just to see um, if the um, if there's a storm coming in. So at least I know what's actually happening. I did disable the um, the uh, the tracking and all the all that stuff because uh, it just eats up a lot of uh, power, a lot of uh, battery power. So I just left it as is. Right now the barometric pressure is 10, 12 kilopascals. So, uh, yeah, it is 5.25 p.m. Um, so for the past hour, I've just been relaxing, chilling in the campsite, um, admiring my work on my, <laughs> on my uh, shelter regarding the awning or the vestibule or the tarp. Uh, I'm very, very happy with this. I think I know what to do for next time. Um, I did go through one bag of fire uh, wood already. Reason why I went through that is um, just to heat up this place a bit. Because uh, if I walk to the uh, where the sun is, it's actually incredibly warm. But uh, I'm surrounded with trees and it's like this massive canopy. It's only like hints of sun hitting down. Uh, that's the only time I feel the heat. But the fire itself is really enough heat. Away, uh, well, put it this way. The fire is about... 10 feet 12 feet away from me but i can feel the heat coming up from it so i'm very happy with that um yeah uh there's a good chance that uh, i'm probably going to be relaxing tonight putting my feet up um just uh enjoy the solitude of quietness sort of and uh, just enjoy the evening um like i mentioned before there is no internet no data signal in this area I did post a couple of things. I, I posted a photo of the tent in Instagram. So if you if you are subscribed to, to my Instagram, at uh, is at at camping with Lenny in Instagram, you'll see uh, real time photos of the site I'm going into, the setup, and all that good stuff. So you don't have to wait until this episode comes out. So just give you a heads up that uh, if you want to see the the tent, um, the setup, and the gadget I'm looking at, you can review it from, you can see it from there as well too. Also, um, also I've been thinking of an idea of uh, of doing something extra for this channel for the, for camping with Danny, but I'll let you know about that during the the fire chats, uh, fireside chat we're gonna have tomorrow in day two. Uh, I think I'm gonna have a fireside chat. Uh, at least once uh, once every camping trip. If there's no camping trip, it'll be once a month. Um, just to give a little bit of, um, um, of what's actually going on as well. 
so i'll let you guys know what's what's uh tomorrow day two when we have that chat um but um, i think for the past three four camping trips now because the fourth the third one was actually with family so i didn't bother recording anything in that one because it's a private uh, private event um but um i think i know what to do for going forward actually um because today was a blessing in disguise because of the rain i had to put the tarp on but yes i learned how to put a camping tarp on in poles by myself i was very proud of that very very proud but now i know now i have an idea how to attach this uh tarp inside uh within my gazelle to have a a vestibule so during the rain or snow or any winter weather like or cold weather or rain weather or any wet weather um, at least i have something that's ready to go it does not mean that i'm going to have an awning or again a tarp up and running every time depending on the situation itself um, but if it's going to be an open campsite then yeah i'll put one on if it's just going to be shaded by the trees then um i'm probably just going to skip it and just use my tent as a, as a shelter itself so there's a lot of option and variety here um because it's the reason why i'm i'm looking now i feel like i have my setup sorted out because um right now i have everything i need camping wise like equipment wise and i'm very happy where everything stands how everything's set up um i downsized my 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 stove already um i might get another light uh for the outside right now i'm using the coleman sorry the woods light the usb light i'm really enjoying it so i might score one for for the next season if i can find one um uh, because it's it's great I, I like that thing it works really well uh what else um yeah i'm also looking at possibility of getting a uh a fire pit like a portable fire pit instead of using the one here reason why is the cooking portion of it um i'm getting the point that it's uh it's easier for me to bring not even a fire pit i don't know what it is i'm looking at but i'm looking at um a bio light fire pit one right or or camping stove or it's our camping barbecue instead of using the wood uh the reason why is um i'm spending a lot of money in the wood portion of it it's nice to have a camp fire but the campfire for me is just warmth right for cooking it's nice but you have to lower down you have to make an amber to get some heat to cook properly but uh, having a firewood like this uh, camp campfire it's nice but I'm kind of still leaning towards I'm sort of leaning towards getting a, a portable barbecue kit I don't know yet we'll find out next year if I decide to go that route um, this year I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing now I make a decision next year what I'm planning to do because um, there's a lot of ideas I'm looking at a lot of um, potential easy 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 setup but uh, I don't know this is just a thought um, yeah I'm going to just rest for a bit I'm gonna rest for a bit um, I'm probably gonna start cooking dinner roughly around six but uh, we'll see I'll chat to you. I'll, uh, da, 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 da. I'll chat to you guys later. It is 6:19 p.m. I started cooking dinner tonight. Tonight's uh, dinner is ground pork with mushrooms and rice. Uh, that's what we're having tonight. Dinner tonight. I cooked this last night, uh, but the rice I'm cooking now. Um, I have a new stove. Actually, it's uh, it's an isobutane stove, but it's a woods portable butane stove it's only one burner it's portable it's uh this is the first time I'm actually using it a full-blown camping I actually have my backup uh, propane stove just in case I need it or just in case this thing fails or whatever happens to it at least I have a backup on it but eventually this is going to be my go-to burner going forward it's small lightweight easy to carry a same proof isobutane case or the canister that I use for my thermocell. Uh, the canister I got is the the uh, the 450 gram or the five or the 15.8 ounce container canister. It's actually pretty big, so um, I've been using both 
canister for the uh, for the um, for the uh, thermocell. Uh, so it's working really well, and this thing boils really fast. Like it's really boiling. I gotta double check if this is actually boiling, boiling. Because if it is, this is crazy. Again, I don't normally use butane when I cook. I've been using uh, propane for the longest time. Holy crap, it's already cooked. Okay, so that. Okay, so that's uh, interesting. Again, I don't normally use butane, so this is my first time using it. And I'm very impressed how fast this thing is cooking. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put the uh, rice in. After that, then I'll put this away and start heating up my dinner. Okay, first is turn that off, lift this guy up, and I'm supposed to pour in the five minute rice to this thing. And let this simmer for a bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna put back the lid, put this away. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the setup on my uh, my kitchen area. Uh, it's pretty simple, <laughs> yet very. It's simple. Um, it's literally just uh, one of those collapsible um, uh, bucket with a with a 14 liter thing. But uh, yeah, I'll show you everything <laughs> after. After uh, when I'm when I'm heating this thing up because it's pretty uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, I've been I had this idea that I was looking at uh, Instagram uh, or um, Instagram uh, Pinterest because uh, they do have some ideas from other campers how they set up their camp and I was very very curious how people set up their uh, their stuff away from uh, from other people because you never know. You might catch something that you like and you want to check it out, right? Put a little bit of pan in there uh, because I don't want this to stick. Just gonna pour everything in there. Uh, first, let's start the stove. Careful with that. It does heat up fast, like the butane heats up incredibly fast. So I'm just not used to heating. Oh shoot. That means I'm gonna get critters tonight. Oh shoot. Uh, okay, 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 hold on here. Sorry. Uh, the heat caught me off guard. Because again, I'm used to using, um, uh, non-butane so I'm kind of off, off guard regarding how fast this thing heats up. Huh. I'm definitely gonna get visitors tonight. <laughs> I keep dropping stuff so I have to make sure that uh, that this area gets cleaned pretty fast. Okay okay I'm gonna stop recording I'm gonna cook and I'll get to, I'll get back to you as soon as uh, dinner is about to start. It is 6.37 p.m. Dinner is served. So with my makeshift uh, shelter with my tarp, I keep calling it shelter, I don't know why. Uh, dinner is about to serve. The only thing that I forgot is ketchup. Oh man, that sucks. Uh, it would be nice because this thing tastes so good with ketchup. Um, so I'm just mixing the the ground pork and the rice together with the mushroom. It's uh, I grew up with this stuff. It's great. It's not. It's uh, it's good. The recipe is pretty simple. It's literally uh, ground pork, salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of um, fish sauce. Just a little bit of a little je ne sais quoi, A little bit of a taste to it. If you guys never had fish sauce before, it's actually pretty, very very good. Uh, but yeah, that's all I'm having. So let's go taste out.
Let's, let's see what this is, tastes like. Mmm. 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 Excellent. Excellent. This is... This is great. If this keeps up, I might just pre-meal all my stuff and just have... I just have to heat up all my meals. This is good. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going to have my meals sorted out before I leave. For the first night, so at least I don't have to worry about it. I just eat it after. Um, the wind is blowing. Um, I might stake out the... Uh, the, um, the tarp a bit more tonight so it doesn't blow out uh, so it doesn't rip so I'm gonna do that after dinner tonight I'm gonna put some more uh, guidelines but first I'm gonna have dinner oh yeah this is good. I'm gonna have dinner then I'm gonna put this uh, put the guidelines up and sort that out it is 6 50 p.m. dinner is done Whew, that was good dinner. That was very, very good dinner. And um, yeah, typically, <coughs> pardon me, when I go camping, <clears throat> when I have dinner, I usually watch the baseball game or watch a movie or anything like that. Um, but because the cell signal here is so bad or non existent, sorry, there's a guy driving by, it's like practically non existing. Okay, this guy is coming in in a Mustang, going camping. Awesome, that's great. Uh, but now I was saying that um, uh, I normally watch a movie or a baseball game or whatever, right? But unfortunately, because the cell signal here is so not there, like really nothing here, I had to I had to turn off my. Uh, I was trying to figure out what I can I do or watch and listen to because. Right now, I didn't download any music at all from Spotify. I thought I didn't download any movies. Um, but so, so what I did is um, I turned off my cells, my, my, my da data, checked all my streaming videos, uh, platform like Netflix, Crave, uh, Amazon, Apple, what I, whatever, everything. And I realized that app, I downloaded Apple, I downloaded Crazy Rich Asian um, last month or yeah, about last month and a half ago because I went to a business trip in Vegas. I ending up downloading it uh, because I bought, I have, I, the copy is mine. I downloaded it to my phone and I just left it there and I never deleted it. So I was scrambling trying to figure out what I'm going to watch or listen to and I realized it's there. So I'm just, oh, look. Looks like I'm be watching Crazy Rich Asian uh, for the next two nights. Uh, that's awesome. But uh, but yeah, so fair warned, if you are planning to go camping, I suggest you download movies and TV shows on your phone from your streaming app. You can actually get it uh, an offline copy. <coughs> oh, pardon me. An offline copy of the video. So just in case you don't have data, you can just watch it on your phone. So lesson learned from my end, and you just learn a new trick. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's just very, I never thought about it, to be honest with you. I never thought about just downloading the video so I can watch it. I was relying on data so much for the past few trips, I never realized I should be downloading it. So the next trip, I'm definitely downloading a copy just in case so I can um, watch at night before I go to bed and just while I'm eating because sometimes it gets very lonely if you're not if you're by yourself uh, having dinner and uh, we're just standing the fire before you relax or anything like that so it can be very um, lonely by yourself so having watching um, a video like a video or watch listening to music sort of makes you feel good right and don't get me wrong I love camping alone uh, going solo camping is great but sometimes because I'm used to having my wifey with me, talking to her and all that stuff, but she's not here, then I should just watch a movie, right? So it's a, it's a little um, a little trip, a little, a, little, a little trick you guys should be aware. I just found, literally realized I should be doing it too. So yeah, so download your movies and TV shows and your music before you go camping so you have a copy of it. So you can watch it just in case there's no data plan or data 
not plan, but data access in the area that you're capping at. Lesson learned. It is 7.31 p.m. Whew. So I just finished cleaning up the campsite a bit uh, for, for the evening. I also went to the bathroom as well too. And I was very shocked, shocked and, and shocked and surprised that uh, when I was going to the bathroom, there was deers walking around. Just deers randomly walking around the park. It was awesome. It was just pretty neat when I saw that. I'm like, this is awesome. This is really cool. So just make a note. If you're coming here at Rock Point, there's a good chance there's going to be deers running around. So make sure all your food is away when you guys pack for the evening. Um, try not to spill food because I did. So I know I'm going to have some, uh, some visitors tonight. So that's going to be interesting. I also did, uh, I also, what I ended up doing is uh, I ended up putting uh, extra guidelines to the tarp itself, especially in the sides and the front, because I don't want this thing to fly over, uh, rip apart uh, a middle of the night, especially if there's a nice gust of wind coming in. Uh, it's supposed to be a high of 16 tonight, 17, 16, but um, it is forecast to be low as 13 degrees C. So just be, so I'm just very cautious about that too. I'm not sure how wind is going to affect this area. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I can actually hear Fort uh, Lake, Lake Erie here. So I'm going to walk over there tomorrow and take some photos, um, all that good stuff. I might do some videos and post that in Instagram. So if you want to see foot videos, go to Instagram, like uh, at Camping with Lenny. In Instagram, Instagram.com slash Camping with Lenny. You'll find the uh, Instagram there too. Um, it's the Instagram account, official Instagram account. You can actually uh, view some of the videos there and photos. I already posted some photos here. Unfortunately, it is, it's hard to get data right now. Um, not hard, it just does not exist. So, um, so what I have, so I rarely get data here. So I'm just going to do whatever I can uh, post. I might post when I get back uh, to civilization, uh, post it from there. Um, yeah, so it just, just chilling right now. I'm gonna crack another beer. Uh, enjoy the evening. It is getting chilly here. Uh, before I call it a day and brush my teeth, I'm just going to um, grab my sweater off the car and uh, hunker down in the ca in the tent and warm up. Uh, if you guys haven't heard the uh, the review of the, the Gazelle T4, check it out. Um, surprisingly, I think there's an R value in this tent because it gets really warm. Uh, there's a not warm, not hot, warm, but there's a massive temperature change between what is outside and what is inside, uh, especially in the wet, uh, cold weather. In May, I was surprised that I was very, very comfortable during in May when it's it cold outside and it's very nice and warm inside, especially when you close the the, the, door, uh, the windows. So um, I can't wait to experience that again. Um, I was right. I am planning to get extra light uh, for October camping because it's 7:34. It's already dark in here. Um, it can get dark really fast, especially if you have can uh, tree, a canopy, tree canopy on top of you. It just gets dark really fast. But if you walk outside your camp area, it's pretty uh, pretty bright. So just be aware of that. Um, I was hoping to take some photos of the campsite. Uh, this evening, but uh, I'm just gonna do it tomorrow when the fire is raging <laughs> and uh, have a better, uh, better, uh, better equip. Like, in other words, I'm not tired at all. I'm just a little physically um, exhausted from setting up, especially the um, uh, the first time setting up a tarp by myself. Normally, I have a, I have a hand, but it's not by myself. So, uh, a lot of um, a lot of like. Ooh, that's a great idea. Ooh, that's an idea. Ooh, that's an idea moment when I was putting this together and uh, and having my tent um, using as a base for the tarp and attaching it there and at the same time I'm actually going to have my own like well, my own vestibule that I that's I want to say. I want to say my own vestibule going forward. So when I decided to go camping in a very open field, uh, sometimes camps I do doesn't have it, um, uh, trees. Um, I can uh, set it up this way and have shade during the uh, during at night. So um, I can't wait to set that up. Um, the ground is still 
pretty damp uh muddy in some places actually very very muddy the car is disgustingly dirty <laughs> from the outside and it's a white truck it's a white suv and you can actually see the dirt so um i can't wait to get that car wash too uh okay i have raccoons i heard raccoons oh yeah that's raccoons very loud raccoons very angry raccoons um i should uh clean up my stuff now just in case the raccoons decide to come out and have a field day in this campsite uh i'll be back i'm just gonna clean up the uh the rest of my stuff it is 8 25 p.m i am actually in my tent now just relaxing uh the reason why i ended up going to my tent early instead of my usual just hanging outside because of the the fire situation um to make a long story short, the fire itself was great, but because of the um, the muddiness and the dampness of the of the pit, um, I have to get the fire really hot. But because it's been um, raining in and out, it's just hard to uh, <coughs> it's just hard to, to keep the the fire in check. At the same time, it's just too it's very moist outside, very damp. Um, I only brought three bags of of, um, of firewood. Um, I think uh, going forward, I might consider getting a fire, uh, like a uh, like a, a barbecue. Going forward, just to make it easier. Um, but um, if I do rely on fire to to cook my food, I have to be very self conscious regarding how much firewood I'm using. Uh, throughout the uh, throughout the camping trip itself because it can get very very pricey really fast so um, I might consider getting a uh, barbecue uh, for October we'll see <coughs> but uh, right now I'm just going to um, do uh, keep the wood um, the stock uh, I still have a, a full two bags still, so uh, I think I'm gonna just save it up to make a bit very, very, a very big fire tomorrow night because I am cooking a steak and uh, mushrooms. So I think I should, um, <clears throat> I think I should just save save that till the, till tomorrow. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm just rel relaxing in bed right now. Um, I'm gonna continue watching my movie that I downloaded a few months ago, but still on my phone, thank goodness, because I don't have data. <laughs> uh, first world problems, guys. First world problems. I can't have, I can't go camping without a movie to watch. So sad. But uh, yeah, it's kind of funny because I was talking to my wife uh, earlier tonight. Um, and she's like, so there's no data, what are you going to be doing? Did you bring a book? So I'm like, no, I didn't bring a book at all. Uh, I didn't bring the Switch as well, too, because I was planning to bring my Nintendo Switch to play. Uh, but I decided not to bring it because I know I'm going to be busy. And um, I'm busy doing camping stuff. So I decided to just leave it at home. And uh, <clears throat> I wish I brought it with me. <coughs> so, <coughs> yeah, it's very frustrating. Oh, well. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm just gonna watch a movie, um, let you know before I go to bed, uh, before I, I will say goodnight to you guys after I watch my movie. It is 9.30, um, I think I passed out a couple of times while I was watching a movie, <laughs> so, uh, I'll take that as a cue for me to go to bed now. Uh, I just want to say uh, goodnight, and I'll talk to you guys in a few seconds in day two. Later. It's day two at 6.34 a.m. And I couldn't sleep at all last night. Uh, not because of the cold, not because of the, the weather. Because of how much of you guys can still hear it. The cicadas, the crickets, and the frogs. It was all night. Like, I fell asleep, I fell asleep with them. So it's not a big deal. But, um... 
by around uh, 2 o'clock ish, 2 30 ish. I woke up because the volume level of all three just increased, just doubled, doubled, doubled the, um, the volume. Uh, it was just unbearable. Um, I was in and out of sleep, and um, yeah, I just couldn't sleep at all. So, so I tried to uh, power through it. I mainly did. Woke her up about 10 minutes ago, went to the bathroom, came back. It was still still there. The good news is I'm not the only site that actually has to, has to, you know, deal with this. Um, I was passing by a few sites and um, some of them are actually a lot louder than mine. Uh, I bet you, actually, you know, to be honest with you guys, if you actually drown out the insects, you can actually hear the lake, so it's pretty neat. Um, I was really hoping to get a, a view of the lake. I don't mind the wind. I can I can manage the wind and the coldness coming from the, from the water, but insects are just loud. They're just loud. Um, yeah, they're just loud. Um, yeah, um, I'm just going to lay back down and <laughs> see if I can fall back to sleep again. Because, uh, oh man, that was a long night. It is 8.21 a.m. I'm just making coffee now because I can't live without coffee. Um, I just finished doing a review of the Wakoka Kapo... Yeah, the Wakoka. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. Uh, uh, coffee a drip coffee maker a portable co a drip coffee maker um i've been using it on and off for the past uh, few months now majority of the majority of the time i'm using it is actually for work uh because i have my own coffee station portable coffee station that i bring with me um this time i'm actually using it in camping this is the first time i'm actually using this in camping and uh so far i'm very happy with what it's actually it makes my coffee experience a lot better in camping than before so that's kind of interesting it is 9.39 a.m. Um, coffee's done. Coffee's so good. Uh, I'm just boiling some uh, water for breakfast this morning. Today I'm going to have um, uh, Johnsonville sausage patty, eggs, and uh, rice. Uh, yeah. So the rice I'm using is actually a five minute instant rice, uh, dry, uh, five minutes one, because um, I try to cook normal rice in, in a pot. Uh, my skill set of cooking rice in a pot, traditional rice, is t oh, tremendously bad. So I switched to five minutes. This actually makes my life a lot easier. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm having for breakfast. Uh, so the temperature is getting hotter and hotter. Um, I can feel the heat coming out. Um, it's actually getting hot really fast. Uh, because I don't have data, so it's hard for me to determine what the exact temperature it is. So that's why I'm looking at getting a, um, a thermometer or temperature gate temperature for an outdoor temperature just to find out exactly the temperature outside us because um, it, it's a crapshoot if you don't know what it is, right? Um, before I was relying on data to give me that information, but um, I can't rely on that now. So uh, going forward, I definitely need to get one of those just to keep an eye on the temperature. I do have my GPS here to give me the, give me the barometric pressure to determine if a storm is coming or not, but still, storm and the temperature is complete, uh, barometric pressure and temp regular temperature is completely different. So that's why I'm considering it. I did pass by it several times when I was getting tired. I was debating it. I'm like, I should be fine. I'll just use my data. But uh, lessons learned. Definitely be getting a, <laughs> a temperature for the outside. But uh, yeah, my fire actually, um, I accidentally touched it and the whole thing collapsed. So it just more, uh, it's just steam coming out from the, um, from the, uh, from the wood because it's damp. Um, after breakfast, I'm going to clean the, the area a bit uh, so I can have it uh, cleaned up because uh, the critters, our, our, our raccoon friends decided to come in last night and uh, demolish the, the garbage uh, bag that I hang on the tree. So apparently they're tall enough to reach it. 
or they climbed it. I don't know which, but they climbed it and I'm kind of annoyed. So I have to deal with that uh, after breakfast. It is 11.28 p.m. I just got back from my walk uh, to the beach itself. It's actually very nice. Um, it's actually parsley um, coral. And if you keep further uh, west from my campsite, if you keep going west, you'll start getting sand, sandier beach. So it's not really a um, optimized for for sunbathing depending if you have uh, beach shoes and all that stuff you should be fine um the the view is just fantastic so i'm gonna post some in 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 instagram i'm also gonna post some more photos in the website itself so if you go to camping with lenny you'll see the uh, just go straight to this podcast and you'll see the um you'll see some uh, you'll see a photo slide and all this good stuff um I, what i normally do when i go camping is when I have time, I actually walk around the campsite to see if there are other better sites within the park itself. So in this case, I actually found several sites that actually suitable for two or more people. Uh, typically when I get a site, I usually get something that's like um, small enough for me, but I need to make a note for, for sometimes if I need a site that's bigger because of, um, because just in case I have people coming with me, right? So I found a couple of sites just around my uh, campsite itself. Ah, hot. Ah. Uh, sorry, I just literally touched my my thermocell right where the uh, where the uh, where the flame is. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm saying that I normally go to uh, walk around to see what's what's out there. I'm sorry. My chair is just crackling and like making weird noises. Hold on. I'm just literally not uh, getting comfortable here. Weird. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, sorry. Back to sitting down again. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I was saying that um, I would just have a tendency to just walk around the campsite to see what's uh, what's available. Uh, what if there's a site that's actually better than what I have now? Um, because you never know. Because there's a guarantee you're not gonna get the same site for next time you come back, right? Plus, I want to start making a database regarding what site is considered the best site. So I might do that actually. <laughs> uh, going forward, I should just make a site of a uh, site survey of what is considered, what is bad, what is not good. So all that good stuff. But. I was saying that uh, typically I just walk around and uh, see what I can find. Uh, I found a couple of places. Um, I think I've, le I've learned my lesson for in this trip that uh, having a tree cover does not mean a good thing. Because if it rains, you're stuck. Your, your site will just never going to get dry because of, the, uh, because, of the, uh, because of the tree canopy. Right? And you will never, you will never get dry because I came back from my walk and the sun has been out shining on the uh, shining on my tent area my my site but unfortunately because of the tree cover it's just not enough there's not enough uh light can go through from the canopy to dry this area out so i think going f going f for the future i'm just going to find a site that's actually open um because uh, like i mentioned earlier because uh yesterday too my size, my camping setup now is, uh, is set up to have its own shade. So I think going forward, I'm just going to skip the uh, skip a, a site with shade. I'll just make my own shade. I think that's the easiest way to maintain dry, to keep your keep your tent area dry. Because if you don't keep your tent area dry, you will get mosquitoes, like a lot of mosquitoes. Like what I'm, what I'm dealing with right now is just a lot of mosquitoes that just, just annoys. It's just very, very annoying. So just keep that in mind. If you are looking for a site, always look for something that's partially in the sun or majority in the sun. And if you have uh, a gazebo or a tarp that you can put up, or even a, vest a very big vestibule, use that as your shade. At least your camp area is dry. It's just, it's too wet. Um, I was hoping the sun will be above me right now, but it's not. <laughs> if I walk to, the, to where the, the driving area, like the public road, 
it's super sunny. If I go in, go in my sight, it's shaded. It's too much shade. So I'm very, 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 not disappointed, but lessons learned. A lot of lessons learned this trip. A lot, a lot of lessons learned. It is 2.04 p.m. and I just finished having lunch. And my goodness, the humidity just whew, increased. You have a nice breeze coming in from the lake, but my goodness, it's just so hot. Um, I was debating to take a shower right after dinner, after breakfast, sorry, after lunch. <clears throat> but holy cow, it's humid. I might have to wait a bit later on. Um, I'm going to clean up the site for a bit and uh, <clears throat> make a decision if I'm going to take a shower or walk back to the beach and get some um, get some nice cool air um, but it is incredibly hot not hot but incredibly humid just making everything hot and sticky um, <clears throat> the um, the critters the cicadas and the crickets um, not as bad compared to yesterday when I came in around this time but uh, you can still hear them <clears throat> Whew. I just finished eating lunch and it's just been so humid and um, yeah it's just humid I don't know what to say um, the breeze is nice but at the same time it's not helping at all it's just sticky it's overcast the sun was out earlier, but the ground is still damp. So the humidity is coming from the ground is sipping up and just making everything feel sticky. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I might just clean up and um, yeah, I might just clean up and um, figure something out. Yeah, I might just clean up and just figure something out. I'm just going to sit down. Where the open area is just to get some breeze because uh, when you sit down uh, it just sometimes it just doesn't help at all it is 4 55 p.m and my friend cicadas are back and crickets crickets and cicadas are back yep crickets are back cicadas are back they're like talking uh, I can't wait for the frogs to come out and uh, I'm gonna have my trios again <laughs> and um, it's kind of funny though because this site here this campsite it's really close to residential uh, I did I did do a walkabout uh, earlier today and there's one side of the campsite it's literally like a ba someone's backyard uh, you can see the person's house through the uh, the campsite so that's kind of weird but uh, if you stay inside the park itself, it's actually very nice. There is a day use area uh, that you can go into, but uh, overall, this whole park is like pretty well maintained. The bathrooms are super clean. The um, the drive through are are like gravel drive through uh, drive uh, drive path, so it's um, it's it's fine. Um, what I've noticed as well too uh, in the past, uh, some of the when I did my walkabout some of the um some of the sites were very open they're not like like there's no separation like um like uh like like other campsites this one is like when you when you get to your site it's just open if you go to another site it's just open there's no like set of privacy so you have to use your car to be, to have a privacy uh to your site i did this to my uh, site i just used my car to block the um uh, the uh, the opening a bit just to have a little bit of privacy, but uh, yeah, no, it this uh, majority of the site what I've seen so far is zero privacy, um, but some of them do. Some of them are amazing, like it's cl it's closed up, so you don't see your neighbors or or see people walking past by. Uh, yeah, that it's it's mixed, right? I also I also um I noticed that when I was walking around. Uh, because it rained yesterday and today's sunny some of the site that's like um, direct sun was drying up but there's still puddles of water so drainage in the park is not very good um, for example my fire pit is still muddy and it's practically I can't even sit beside the uh, the fire pit it's just too muddy 
so um, that's going to be there. <laughs> I'm not going to use that. But uh, no, it's uh, it's just weird that um, the, the land itself, uh, there's no drainage. There's no way to drain um, water out. So that's kind of weird. Uh, I also noticed that too, some, some sites actually has a gravel parking lot or parking space for your car. Not so, it, it's, it's just weird. It's, it, it looks like an old, it looks like a house. The Demo house has been demolished and there's still a drive through driveway. And so that's kind of different. So, and uh, there is pathways as well too. So uh, you can, you don't have to, some areas to get into the bathroom and the washrooms, they put pathways between uh, campsites. So you don't have to go walk around. You just walk straight, right through. And it's pretty covered, so you don't see that pathway. Uh, you don't see that pathway, so that's pretty, uh, pretty well thought out. Um, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting park. It was very, very interesting. So I just want to let you guys know that uh, the wind, um, the wind did pick up, um, but the sun's still keeping it hot. And oh wow, a squirrel just went into my sight, and it's massive. It's like, it's a big squirrel with no um, fear of humans. Like, he's just literally going close to me now. So, he's just going close to me. He's about 10 feet away. He's going around my tent. So, I'm going to keep an eye on this guy just in case he decides to uh, rip my tent apart. Hold on here. Let me look at it. Yeah, he's going around my camp, my tent. I'm gonna keep an eye on him. Yeah, it's a bushy hair squirrel. And uh, is this surprisingly kind of weird? It reminds me of my cats. Uh, I don't want it too close. I gotta make some noise. I don't want to get too close and get too comfortable. Uh, or also be eating in my, t eating around my tent or making, you know, business around my tent. Uh, it's a staring competition now. Yeah, I was saying that uh, uh, when you do come into this uh, this campsite, it is um, open to, it's, there's a lot of wildlife. Like uh, my first day here, a family of deer just walking around. Uh, this morning there was rabbits. So just be aware that if you do come to this uh, area, there is wildlife here. So just be aware of that. Um, so just make sure you don't leave food around. Uh, because they will come to your tent and start eating your garbage or anything like that. So just be aware. Holy cow, this squirrel is big. Big squirrel. Um, yeah, so yeah, I just want to let you guys know that, uh, yeah, if you are planning to be here, just make sure that uh, you guys are aware that there is wildlife do walk around. So just be careful. If you are planning to go at night, Make sure you have a lamp with you, right? Uh, but yeah, looks like people are coming in now. It's Wednesday, so people are coming in halfway to their week to enjoy the weekend. I just saw an RV coming by here. It is a mixed use, by the way. Tent and um, trailers and RVs can be used in the same lot, so there's no separations. So just give that heads up. Man, this squirrel is like very, very adamant to come close. So I'm just making noise, but uh, not a brave little guy. Uh, is he going to my? <laughs> so I'm just stomping my feet here because he's very close to my stuff. It is 6:05 p.m. and the temperature did drop significantly. It is freezing now. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah it's cold so i don't know what i'm gonna do um for dinner yeah it's just cold it's just incredibly cold so what i'm gonna do is um um i have 45 minutes left in this movie so i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start the fire first before i finish this movie uh before it continues to just to heat up the area and um just to get that started the temperature again it's, it's just cold now it's just getting cold comes to the point that um it's actually getting uncomfortable and the um the canopy like i mentioned yesterday 
uh, the canopy or this morning I mean the canopy uh, the tree canopy is just covering so much light from uh, from the sky that uh, it's you can see the the light change um, visibility I mean uh, between the campsite and if you step away from the campsite it's just really dark really fast and um, yeah it's just yeah different uh, compared to my other campsite it's just bright this one's just dark so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to um uh start the fire get my one of my lamps ready just in case and for dinner um i'll figure out what to do for dinner um i do want that steak the steak looks very good if i decide to skip the steak i am going to toss the garbage tonight uh because it is raw meat yeah so uh, I'm gonna start the fire. I'll let you guys know when it's up and running and when I start cooking. It's 7.13. Uh, one half the steak is done. I'm just finishing on the other one. Um, this is the first I'm actually cooking with Pam. Uh, Non-stick spray thing for oil instead of real oil. Uh, reason why I'm using this is just makes feeling a lot better. I think it's the best to describe it. Uh, so the steak is uh, peppercorn, uh, rub peppercorn in it. So, so I got sort of thing. I can't remember how the size it is, but it's pretty big. Um, I'm having this with uh, with mushrooms, and uh, I'm just gonna seal this in the side. So stand by. So I'm having um, I'm having steak with shiitake mushrooms, and uh, it's gonna be delicious. I'm just searing the corners so it keeps the uh, juice in there. Okay, so this brings me to medium. Medium. Uh, rare, actually. A little bit more oil in there. Yeah, and Pam. Uh, this isobutane portable stove that I got from Coleman, from Woods actually, worked out really well. I'm very, very happy with this. Yeah, it's it runs hot. <laughs> I think it's just a characteristic of uh, of, iso, uh, of butane that's always run hot. So I rarely use it like max or medium. Oh, there it is. There it is. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna use another uh, sonar pot for the shiitake mushrooms because uh, a lot of oil in this. I was planning to have uh, like um, rice or something with uh, something starchy, but I'm just gonna go with vegetables. I think it's the easiest route right now. Do the vegetable thing. I'm gonna do some water in this one, so. Before I start cooking, sorry about that. I forgot to get water before now. So, tip: if you're planning to cook, uh, bef before you cook, grab water first. It will help. Uh, you know, it just helps a bit. <laughs> yeah, now, so now I'm going to do some shiitake mushrooms with my meal. Uh, this is again, it's just regular shiitake mushrooms. All right, I'm gonna cook this, uh, I'm gonna cook this guy, then I'll get back to you. It is 8 36 p.m., and now it's time for a fireside chat. Uh, this is a segment of a of the camping episode. Um, and we're just gonna go through all the uh, all the updates gonna happen on the channel, what my thoughts are. All that good stuff so we'll start with the channel i think the channel is actually the best way to start this um yeah let's start with the channel so we'll start with something simple i started an instagram account so if you go to instagram.com slash camping with lenny there you'll start seeing photos of camping camping setup uh what i'm doing now 
uh, everything from um, experimenting on setup all the way to like the gear I'm reviewing or just overall for example if I'm going for a small nature hike you'll start seeing a lot of uh, a lot of content there too also there uh, if I decide to, if I end up reviewing let's say uh, Termosel you'll start seeing a glimpse of what that review is there as well too almost like a um, uh, almost like a um, a heads up what's going down in a pipeline regarding episodes I think that's the best way to describe also you'll start seeing photos as well too regarding um, uh, where I'm going to be going um, just little shorts little videos little like tricks tricks and tips shorties gonna be part of that uh, Instagram um, account as well too so that's one. Second is the new look in YouTube. Uh, I'm not sure if you noticed if you watched last episode regarding uh, regarding the uh, regarding the coffee maker, the uh, Wakoka coffee maker. Uh, the the look of the graphics within when you watch it is actually different now. I decided to change it a bit, a little bit, give you more information on the screen rather than going description. Just give it a little bit more um, more in your face style marketing right so that's that's one that's the second one so it's going to be changes as well too uh there's going to be a lot more content happening overall in the podcast so my goal is to have at least one episode a week uh everything from reviews to tricks and tips to camping you name it everything will be just going to be coming out on a weekly basis now uh the reason why i'm going to do that is i want to grow the uh the community i want to have that conversation with you i want to have that that uh that interaction with you when uh, when we when I release an episode, for example, um, I also want to hear from you guys as well too regarding content that you guys want to see or or a review that you guys want to check out or anything like that. Please drop me a line; it's there too. Um, you can actually go to my website, Lenny uh, CampingWithLenny.com. There you'll find all the episodes, my contact information. Um, uh, the gear that I'm using, everything from camping to like my podcasting setup, you'll see everything there as well too. The reason why I want to give you all that is, um, is just to give you a uh, uh, a a list of equipment. Uh, all the equipment I have are not incredibly expensive. I bought them throughout my years of camping. Uh, some of them are brand new. Some of them are just literally, just a literally. A basic I got basic equipment I got from from Amazon for example or Canadian Tire if in Canada uh, it's very um, it's very simple very cheap um, useful nothing fancy right again the purpose of that is just to give you an idea of that you don't have to go fancy when you go camping all my gear can fit in an SUV my gear list is going down smaller and smaller and smaller uh, every time I go so Again, you don't have to go fancy. So that's one. Also, there's a checklist as well there too. There you can find a check uh, in the uh, equipment list. There's a checklist of uh, of um, of what do you want to pack for your first time camping. There you can you can download that. It's in a PDF format. You can check whatever you want to check. Uh, if you're using it, at least you have a starting baseline when you do your when you camp by yourself, right? So that's that's a good start for you. Sec, uh, the I don't remember anyone. Uh, the next one is the um, is the the overall channel. Uh, going starting next month, that's October. I will be releasing a schedule for all the live stream I'm doing. The live stream is just going to be a uh, uh, an open dialogue between yourself and myself. If you have a question regarding camping, you have a uh, you have an antidote regarding camping, or you have a uh, question regarding your first time camping, what you should bring, where do you want to go, and all that good stuff. The world is your oyster. It's literally your time to have a conversation with me, to have that dialogue. Um, I don't uh, I don't no questions is 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 limited, depending. Again, there's an asterisk now on depending, but uh, it has. A, and yeah it's just gonna be a clean uh, conversation i don't know what platform i'm gonna go with yet uh right now i'm looking at podbean's um uh, uh, podbean's uh, uh system or twitch or or youtube or facebook i'm not sure yet but uh, i'm looking at that i'm looking at all those four to figure out what's the best way to do this 
um, again this is gonna be a live stream this conversation is for you guys if you have any questions or anything like that and feel free to ask me a question then the, um, the pr again the, uh, the the purpose of that is just for us to talk right um, yeah so that's the, uh, the channel update right so now let's go back to camping camping is kind of weird because right now and I'm in Rock Point Provincial Park it is incredibly incredibly dark uh, there's a lot of trees the layout is different uh, it's just a, it's not a weird layout but it's just different um, if you go here during the week like I did no one's here so you'll be strictly alone and there's no light whatsoever there's no there's no uh, light pollution coming from the next town or anything like that it's just completely darkness so this is cool um, but the only problem is there are animals wild animals walking around here there's deers there's rabbits there's um, uh, something else raccoons probably um, I might see my neighbors coming out because it's late now uh, it's uh, there's a lot of um, just be aware when you go camping for the first time go camp somewhere close if you forgot something everything's there if you um, if you decide to go home and cut your trip short uh, feel free to do that too because there's no point for you staying in a place that you're not comfortable with right um, yeah so do, just if you feel uncomfortable go home uh, or talk to someone but uh, I don't I always encourage people to go camping by yourself for the first time um, close to home because you never know you you don't know what's gonna uh, what's uh, if there's an emergency or especially if you forget something at least it's close to home for that right so that's 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 one um, also I realized too that if I'm gonna camp this latest season I need more lights <laughs> like a lot more lights like uh, right now I have my woods um, overhead lights or just like a dome light thing unfortunately I only have one outside and it gets really dark here so uh, nothing else is illuminating me except the fire my light outside and my light inside my tent so it's just different right and um, sometimes it can get very very claustrophobic because in the dark right uh, also uh, what I normally do is I always have a backup light just in case one goes down reason why is again you don't know if your light stopped working and um, and you need uh, you need your backup um, also bring extra batteries I am a big firm believer always bring extra batteries because you never know when you're going to need it I have a little tiny baggie with all batteries all the batteries I've used right now I only use triple A's and uh, yeah I only use triple A's so I have everything triple A's in my bag uh, my camping bag um, anything that's rechargeable I have multiple cam uh, multiple cables just in case one goes down again treat camping like you're traveling always have a backup just in case because you never know when you need it even my podcasting equipment has a backup just in case I need to capture something right um, it's just one of those things that uh, uh, you don't want to leave home without right uh, the other one I will also want to talk to you guys about is communication communication is the key especially if you're going solo camping if you're going solo camping always have your cell phone with you always have a charge ready to go contact your loved ones or contact your 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 partner uh, contact your 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 um, person that you that you need to to keep a prize where you're doing and all that good stuff because the reason why is sometimes when you go camping uh, you're by yourself if something goes wrong they don't know where you are so it gets uh, they just don't know how to track you right and um, and having a daily communication with your love uh, with your partner or with someone will help you ease up ease in going to camping uh, all that good stuff like for, for, for me I call my wife or my wife calls me every day uh, around a certain time um, reason why we do that is just from for my sake and for her sake as well too if something goes wrong with me it's past a certain time she knows that she has to she has to uh, raise the flag right and uh, if I call her she knows that I'm still good 
right? Um, those things, th those things are good to have, especially if, you, especially if you're going by yourself. If you're going back country camping for the first time, or if you've been going back country, you have to do that. You have a, you need to find a way to have a communication with your, with another person, just in case something is wrong. Um, if you're doing provincial park camping, like a typical KOA provincial park and all that stuff, they're fine because there's always a cell signal. Some provincial park. You only get signal, uh, cell signal, but no data. So just keep that in mind. There's no data, but only cell signal. Here in Rock Point, I only get cell signal. I maybe sometimes not really get a data signal. Uh, that's, I learned that the hard way. So it's like, oh, here, I have no data whatsoever. And it uh, doesn't matter which carrier you use, there's no data, there's no data. So uh, just keep that in mind. So what I did is I con contact my wife right away, let her know that I have no data here. So I only can talk so, um, uh, voice, text with no pictures. That's how remote I am right now. But here's the funny thing. If I walk 50 minutes uh, to, the, to like, to the beach i get full signal 5g and all but where i am nothing no signal whatsoever so just keep that in mind if you are planning to go solo camping if if you any i'm going to camping that's uh that they said is supposed to be cell signal and data and all at 5g take it as a great assault there's no such thing as a perfect coverage for 5g if there's no tower there's no tower so just again Keep that in mind. Uh, also, I want to talk about is change of weather. Camping is such an unpredictable thing. Like the whole time I'm here, I've been obs obsessed with weather. The reason why is like, it was hard to get warm here. There's one point I'm just, or get like cool because of the extreme temperature change in this area. For example, I'm bundled up with a sweater and a pants, like uh, sweatpants, because I'm cold, right? But I didn't change to this kind of attire until at least seven o'clock, six o'clock this, this, this evening, because the temperature plummet down. And I'm like, well, this is different, right? Typically, I always have a sweater and sweatpants just in case. Uh, a great example, I went camping on, in August. During the day, the temperature was 20 degrees. And at night, it dropped to 5 degrees. C. But as soon as I got back to the city, or a few days later, uh, or as soon as I got back, the temperature skyrocketed to 35 degrees. C. So there's a massive temperature um, swing when you go uh, eat, when you go camping so always prepared always bring extra layers of clothes just in case you never know there's no harm done if you're traveling in a car you can just leave your heavy coat or sorry your coat or your sweater in your car w until you need them right but with that said if you're planning to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night sometimes the temperature is cold then you might have to bring a sweater. So just be fair warned. So just keep that in. Just keep that in mind. So always dress for the weather. Always bring extra um, heavy coat or anything like that because you never know. You really never. You never know when you need it, right? When you need it, you'll be grateful that you have it. If you don't need it, that's a sweater and a sweatpants in your bag that is minor inconvenience to fit all your stuff, right? And uh, yeah. And also, one more thing regarding clothing, always bring your swimming attire, your swimsuit. Always bring it because you never know when you're going to be taking a dip in a pool or dip in the water in a lake or anywhere. At least you're prepared. I always bring my, sweat, uh, my swim shorts everywhere I go. Doesn't matter if I'm going somewhere warm or some, sorry, doesn't matter if I'm going somewhere incredibly cold. I always have it because you never know there's a pool or or um, or a jacuzzi or a hot tub that you want to just dump into and just rest there, you know. I always bring it. You never know. Again, it's just shorts, right? 
Um, and the other one as well too that I encourage you guys to bring. Unfortunately, I didn't bring it this time. I'm kicking myself right now for it. Is hand lotion. I always have a hand lotion, but this time I didn't bring it because now my hands are incredibly cracked and it's painful. So <laughs> again, it's just one of those things that you should just bring. You know, no harm done if you don't bring it. Again, it's there. But if you are going to bring hand cream, go for scented free because buggies love something smells great. So just keep that in mind. Just think about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I'm just chillaxing here. It's incredibly dark. If you hear a clicking noise, it's just me double checking um, my surrounding because all my light source are practically non-existing. My fire is practically dead now. I have my um, my little lamp outside being swarmed by mosquito. Awesome. Um, yeah, I have my uh, thermosol running. So yeah, so this is campsite. Uh, camp, uh, campsite um, chat, uh, fireside chat. Sorry, fireside chat. Um, I know winter is coming, so I might not have the ability to do fireside chat. If I do, it will be a separate, special episode for fireside chat, right? So uh, at least that will be uh, just keep going. At least we're gonna keep that going. Fireside chat is just a a a simple conversation about my stuff that I'm thinking about at that time. Uh, what I've observed and all that good stuff. So um, Yeah More adventures to come. Uh, this is only day two Tomorrow's day three is my last day. So I'll be packing all that good stuff um, Yeah, so yeah, please subscribe and uh, check out my Instagram um, Instagram.com slash camping with Lenny there. You'll find photos there Unfortunately, I couldn't really post anything in this trip because again because of the uh, no data thing but uh, i'll be posting more and more in there all that good stuff um yeah uh oh yeah one more thing too um my next official camping trip will be at the end of october a cold weather camping depending how you define cold weather sometimes october in ontario can be at 30 degrees so it can be just a simple camping but right now we're treating it like a cold camp or cold weather camping that'll be awesome there's a good chance that i have uh one or two other people joining me for this camping so they'll be uh, part of the podcast so that'll be exciting uh, i'm still waiting for their confirmation but it'll be exciting um yeah we're just gonna be camping and talking and drinking <laughs> right uh that'll be the end of october that's like halloween weekend um i'm not gonna tell you where it is because for privacy i'm not gonna tell you until until actually happens uh i'm thinking about going a couple more trips like an overnighter um somewhere close uh, i'm not sure yet depending on uh, how busy life is all that good stuff so i'll let you know if i end up camping uh in between now and then because it'll be fun um also i forgot to mention the live stream portion um, I'm one, I'm going to try to live stream while I'm camping Just to give you a bit more um, At least more fun that way We'll see how that's gonna work out. I am um, heavily rely on um, data signal and power uh, because I don't I don't book sites with power So I have to rely on my Jackery so I have to make sure it's sunny so I can charge it I'm using it so it shouldn't draw that much power it's just my MacBook Pro that's like not even doesn't draw that much power to be, like, to be honest with you my phone doesn't either so that's that's a there's a possibility of doing a, uh, a live stream while I'm camping that's that's like a step two or that will be a step two of uh, live streaming but uh, if you go to campingbelending.com uh, in the next few days you will start seeing um, a schedule of when the live stream is going to be. I'm planning to do it in the evening so everyone can be at home and listen to it. It will be during the weekday so you don't have to worry about um, uh, weekends and all that stuff. So it's going to be during the weekday. It's just, gonna, uh, I'm not, again, I'm not sure yet. I will let you know. Um, I'll let you know when it's going to be starting. 
uh, if you go to Instagram, everything will be there. So it'll be, I'll, I'll announce it there as well. I'll announce it everywhere. Uh, I'll see if I can have like a countdown thing on my website as well too. So you can actually see if I can just listen it there. If you can listen it there, that'll be great. That'll be awesome. But uh, we'll see. Again, I still have to experiment how to do this. But uh, yeah, that is Fireside Chat. The first one ever in Camping with Lenny. I can't wait for the next one. So, oh, oh one more thing too. If you want to talk about anything in campsite, uh, during the Campsite Chat, uh, Fireside Chat, uh, let me know. Go to uh, go to Camping with Lenny. Leave me a contact information there. Or, uh, you know what? I'm going to put a Fireside Chat uh, uh, Q and A, like questions that you want me to answer uh, or talk about. I'll, I'll I'll put it there so you guys can actually leave your comments there too. If you're listening to this in in uh, in Podbean, you can leave your comments there. I'll see it. If you're listening to this in YouTube, on YouTube, leave your comments in the episode itself, and I'll leave it there. I'll, I'll read it from there as well. But I'm gonna put a special link on uh, a special sub page on my website for fireside chat topics. Um, that would be awesome because at least you, at least it's, everything can be organized there. I can actually have a piece of paper in front of me and we can talk about that. So that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a lot of things. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. And um, yes, I am planning already for next year's camping season. Um, everything's already mapped out. Everything was already on in the schedule, uh, in the calendar. I just have to wait until January when everything opens so I can start booking stuff. That's the trick part, is booking the campsites. That'll be the craziness of this whole thing. So, yeah, so that's Fireside Chat. I can, I realize I keep, I keep calling it differently every time. So we're gonna, we're gonna call it that, we're gonna call it Fireside Chat. That's it, Fireside Chats, because I'm beside a fire and we're chatting. So fireside chat. It's gonna be a sub page and anything. You can leave your, uh, you can comments there and uh, all the good stuff. So stand by. If you again, if you want more information, just go straight to the website campingwithlenny.com. Everything you'll find everything there. Anything brand new and all that good stuff. Um, you can find this podcast if you're listening to, in, for example, in, in Alexa. You can actually go to any, any podcasting app. You'll find Camping with Lenny there. And if you want to watch, if you want to watch this or listen to this on YouTube, you can do that as well too. Okay, I think that's it. I am going to be cleaning up here, finishing everything off. Then I'm going to uh, settle in to inside the tent so I can uh, get ready for bed. It is 10:09 p.m. I am getting ready to head to bed. Um, yeah, so temperature did drop tonight. It is 16 degrees now, so it's going to be a nice chilly evening. Um, compared to last night, the cicadas, the crickets, or whatever, and the frogs are not as loud compared to yesterday. I think yesterday they were loud because of the uh, rain. This time there's no rain, so everyone's just chillaxing now. So hopefully I can get a better sleep tonight compared to what I had yesterday. Yesterday I just couldn't sleep at all because it was just too loud. Um, I can still hear the the, the waves from the from Lake Erie, so that's gonna be nice to listen to. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, I'm officially tired, so <laughs> I'll catch you guys uh, in a few seconds. Talk to you guys later. It's day three, 7.40 a.m. And uh, last night was a little bit of an adventure. Around uh, f- f- three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, I heard an, something outside. It was uh, an animal. I presume it was an animal. Was some mating slash crying sound coming from the, the woods around me. And uh, after that, I couldn't sleep at all because I thought someone, some animal started humping beside my tent or something. But yeah, it was a, um, it was a little crazy. Um, 
I got some sleep, but the uh, but that really freaked me out a bit because uh, <clears throat> you don't normally hear that at all. But this time I did. Um, the good news is the cicadas, the frogs, and the crickets weren't loud at all last night. It was just background noise, so that's good. Even the um, even the waves were very calm as well too last night. <clears throat> I did go to the bathroom around six, uh, six thirty this morning. Um, it was chilly. Uh, right now it's uh, hovering about twelve degrees, according to my watch. It just dropped to eleven now, according to my watch. <laughs> Again, I don't have an outside temperature, so I can't really tell you exactly what it is. And my data is kind of still spotty, <clears throat> but um, yeah. So this day three is my last day. I'm gonna start cleaning up, but first I'm just going to um, start breakfast, coffee, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not in a rush getting out of here uh, compared to before. I can actually take my time a bit. Um, so my goal is just to be out of here at a certain time. Um, yeah. Yeah, I ran out of wood last night, so I have zero wood. I might have leftovers. I might just turn that on, just heat up the place a bit. But um, right now, how it stands is I'm just going to take my time getting out of here. Yeah, I'm just going to go get ready for the day. I'll be back. It is 8, 11 a.m. <clears throat> I'm just making coffee now. Uh, it took me a while to get out of bed after I said I'm going to get out of bed. Uh, <laughs> I am just laying down in bed for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, it is pretty chilly this morning. It's roughly about 10 degrees. I am wearing a hat. That's how cold it is. I'm wearing a toque. Um, it's just cold. It's the dampness making everything feels cold. So it's, um, it's, um, it's a little... I don't want to say unsettling. But it's just weird that not weird but it's just cold <laughs> um so today i was supposed to have i was I decided to go something simple for breakfast this morning coffee and soup uh reason why is um i don't know i just don't feel like cooking <laughs> i just want something simple to eat um just to uh you know just relax for the morning get everything sorted out um yeah, this morning I forgot to mention that uh, there was some siren wailing this early morning, roughly around 6 o'clock. I started hearing it uh, faintly in the background. I don't know where it's, co where it's coming from, but it was just non-stop. It ended about, let's say about not even an hour ago, uh, but it was still going. But um, that was just weird. So um, I just... No, try to ignore it as much as I can, but unfortunately, you can't really ignore those kind of things. It was not like a an emergency um, a siren. It's more like a uh, an uh, an alarm sounding thing. But um, yeah, now it's gone. The sun is out. Um, I think going to be the same thing as yesterday. The sun is not going to hit my sight, so nothing will dry up. The good news is my tarp is pretty dry. Um, a little damp, but it's pretty dry, so hopefully it dries up before I pack. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the sun is up. It's actually a very beautiful sun. I'm going to walk into the streets here. For me, thinking about streets is just a drive, like a drive through. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's that's nice. The sun is nice. Um, it is muddy still because of the dampness of the uh, area. It's very damp. So, uh, I think my conclusion here if you're going to come here, come here during the summer and not during the uh, spring or fall, the uh, reason why is um, it's just too damp. No, everything is like mud there's no in between it's just mud but I think the underlining is it used to be all grass now the grass is gone now it's just mud 
So just uh, be aware if you're coming here uh, outside summer months, it does get muddy here. Uh, this means I have to clean my 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 shoe, my flip flops again, my hiking shoes, my boot, my sandals, it's Keens, and just get that cleaned up again. Um, yeah, I think definitely before I go home and just do a massive, I just do a car wash. Just wash the car, but it's just dirty. And my car is white. It's just gray in the bottom now. So, yeah, it's just a little dirty. Um, good news is the tent is super clean. Um, the rain didn't redo anything. The tarp that I use, uh, the tarp that I use is completely wrong. Uh, I got the. I, I took. I opened the wrong one. I didn't realize until I. Um, we laid it out and put the tent up. I was like, oh crap, I had the wrong tent so, uh, tarp. So I might consider uh, marking that somehow, letting me know that the tarp for the tent is a different one than the tarp that I use just for general tarp use. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I'm right now making coffee, and after that, I'm going to boil some soup. I'll get back to you after um, when, when breakfast is about to start. It is 8.30 a.m. Um, coffee's done. The um, soup is just warming up. Uh, it is instant noodles. Uh, I think it's a Japanese one. Um, so it's, uh, I've been eating the Japanese and the Korean instant soup is it's delicious. Has a nice kick to it, has spice to it. I can't tell you exactly the name of it, unfortunately. But uh, if you go to any, um, and the Asian stores though that carries those have them they're delicious uh, they're just fantastic I'm just closing the trunk just in case uh, buggies goes in there so today's um, today's plan is very simple I'm just gonna clean up take everything down uh, if I decide to have lunch before I head out I'll do that I'll probably do another soup depending on um, what I feel like I might grab something before I head out again, depending what what I feel like. The biggest thing that I'm kind of uh, I have to be careful is just taking the tarp down because I don't know what's on top there. I know there's uh, dead debris like leaves and all that stuff, so I have to do a uh, a smack just to get everything dropped, spider wise, bugs wise. I just have to get it down first before I fold because it can get very messy the next time I use this thing. Um, there is um, stains already, like dirt stains, uh, just underneath the tarp. Because when I was setting this up, um, it was um, it was muddy. Um, but uh, now I know what to do for next time. So lessons learned. Always lessons learned. Every time you go out camping, it's always a lessons learned. So I can't wait for that one. Um, yeah, I know what to do for next time. It'll be great. Uh, I'm very happy with my my uh, setup now. It's uh, less gear that I'm bringing with me. Um, like even my backup propane stove will just gonna stay at home now. I'm not gonna bring it with me anymore um, because it's uh, the the bio. Sorry, the um, the butane uh, stove that I got, the portable one, works perfectly and it's small. I can put it in my dry bin works perfectly so I'm gonna keep it with that setup going forward uh, what else um, yeah my uh, my summer shelter is definitely not coming with me anymore uh, what else yeah the rest is pretty self-sufficient I only use the um, the the picnic table as my kitchen it worked out well I'm very very happy with that if this table is not here then that's not <laughs> that's not a matter but um, yeah, I'm very, very cool with this, with this setup. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I did not start a fire at all today. I just wanted to see how it feels like without not starting a fire. Um, because one, I ran out of wood. Second, um, I just want breakfast. So I'm skipping that. I want to see how my day actually changes uh, because typically I always have a fire when I start in the morning just to get a little bit of um just get a little bit of a warmthness throughout the uh, the campsite but unfortunately 
like I keep mentioning over and over again, this place is incredibly damp. So it's hard to keep heat in. It just sucks up the, the heat and um, uh, in the ground is just mushy. So this really um, no fun uh, walking around here. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna check on my soup. Let's go see what the soup looks like. Ugh. I don't know why I'm a little sore, but I am sore today. Okay, what do we have? Ooh, the oil. The oil was frozen a bit, so it's not frozen anymore. Okay, let's go check this out. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna move the, the lid. Good thing about if you get instant noodles for camping and you're ouch. Ooh, that's hot. Uh, if you have space, get the one with a bowl already because it will make your life a lot easier, right? So you don't have to worry about it. Also, I've learned too, because I already did a spill, uh, have a paper plate underneath it so it will not, um, so if it's spill, especially if a portable table that has slots in it, it doesn't spill in your legs. So just, you can do that. It makes, again, life a lot easier. It's all about simple, it's all about making your camp trip more memorable and more <laughs> easy to bear, especially if you're first timer, right? Uh, instant noodles is great for first timers. Uh, reason why I'm saying that is um, if it gets cold or anything like that, at least you're prepared for for any um, any any things that's coming in. Reason why I'm saying that is um, reason why I'm saying that is just to make it easier. You know, it's um, ooh, here we go. Because if you have instant noodles, if you get hungry. It's easy to heat up water and just eat it instead of um, trying to cook something gourmet. Because if you do something gourmet, sometimes it's just, um, it gets really, it can get very um, exhausting and uh, you feel like you're just at home cooking. Um, the goal is going camping is to relax, put your feet up, and at the same time not worry about things that in other words you just want to enjoy your time right you don't want to you don't want to oh man this is going to be a pain you don't want to to concentrate on trying to make food every time you're hungry you just want to eat something and go right that's why chips are very important snacks are very very important when you go camping because you don't want to um you don't want to again it's all about simplicity Especially going camping. If you're trying to get, if you try to make everything simple, you'll enjoy your time camping. You can put your feet up. You can relax. You can go hiking. You can go to the beach. You can do whatever you want. You just have to. You just have to keep that in mind when you, uh, uh, when you prepare your food, all that good stuff. Because if you if you overthink your food, you'll be cooking more than you're having fun. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Keep your food simple so you have more fun. So instant noodles is good. Pre-made food is good too. You don't have to worry about cooking. You just have to heat it up. If I do an overnighter, if I'm planning, if I'm if I'm planning to do an overnighter, I'll just do that. I'll just bring one tent, not even bother setting the tarp, a table and a chair, and a stove for hot water. And that's it. So again, um, just keep it simple. Um, if you want to be more adventurous, you can use the freeze-dry food. I've tried it. Mixed reviews. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's, the food is like a thing. Oh, having a hot meal, uh, especially on a cold night, or already more, like just, especially a cold night, a hot meal actually helps boost the morale as well, so... Just keep uh, just be aware if you want if you're just not having a good morning or your day is just too cold or the morning is cold have yourself a hot meal you'll be a lot more happier so yeah okay so soup i just dumped in 
um, hot chili oil and a lot of hot chili oil so I don't know how this is gonna taste like uh, look, let's check out the broth hold on let me just put my chair closer let's check out the broth how spicy it is oh not bad wow it's really good it's tomato base soup oh yeah it's not bad not spicy at all so I'm gonna eat I'll catch you guys later catch you guys after um, after breakfast it is 9 a.m. Uh, just finished having my breakfast my soup breakfast I'm just drinking my coffee um, in half an hour ish I'm gonna start uh, cleaning up and start taking stuff down uh, this includes um, changing to something more comfortable uh, working on uh, because it, it will get hot <coughs> oh, pardon me holy cow <clears throat> let's start up let's start over again it is nine o'clock in the morning I just have I've just finished having breakfast so I'm just having coffee um, in roughly about half an hour ish I'm just gonna enjoy my coffee I'm gonna start taking taking stuff down cleaning uh, doing my last dishes and uh, packing and uh, try to get out of here by noonish uh, like I said earlier the biggest thing that I'm kind of worried about is just the uh, the debris on top of the tarp um, because it's um, beginning of fall or not yet it's still September so it's still summer <laughs> uh, so I'm still gonna start uh, making sure there's no debris on top get the inside of the tent cleared up um, and uh, start packing um, the good news is um, all the food is done except three hot dogs I'm still on the side I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that home and just cook it when I get home uh, for that uh, we'll see though because it's been a cooler it should be it should stay cool I need I do need to uh, dry up the the cooler because it's uh, it's we need to dry it up so I can store more stuff inside the tent inside the cooler sorry and get that sorted out uh, but um, yeah we should be fine going ahead of cleaning up but first again I'm just gonna finish my coffee and all that stuff and before I head out I'll give you guys my uh, my final thoughts about today's episode's camping trip it is 12 29 p.m. I am heading home now um, reason why I'm heading home now instead of like later on because it's uh, traffic <laughs> more than anything else uh, so let's talk about my review of this campsite uh, Rock Point Provincial Park um, overall I really do enjoy it I, I like I love the secu um, the um, the the, uh, the isolation of this but here's the thing though your neighbors are pretty close sorry let me face it your neighbors are not very some areas your neighbors can be very close but at the same time um, the the lots are big but there is no privacy I think that's the best way to describe it. You, you're not gonna get privacy based on um, uh, based on lots like compared to other um, other sites you'll get uh, privacy based on um, staggered sites right some sites are not staggered they're just literally across you so and the opening of the of these of the uh, lots are pretty big so just keep that in mind so it, it, it's it's big okay uh, the, the good thing about this site that I was at uh, the area there's actually a park in the middle and there's a path to get into the board uh, to the pathway to get into the beach so I'm definitely pretty cool about that I'm very excited about that that's pretty nice um, the other one as well too that you have to keep an eye on is uh, uh, is this it yeah this is it uh, sorry I'm just trying to drive uh, the other one as well too is um, it's is the wildlife the wildlife is great um, if you're not used to it it'll cough you off guard um, I wasn't aware the the um, the oh dear I went to the wrong way oh well uh, I was not aware of uh, I was not not aware but I was not prepared to have this much wildlife walking around the, the campsite I had deers I had uh, white tailed rabbits uh, running around um, a lot of um, of uh, what should I call it? Um, 
critters, a lot of buggies, like a lot of buggies. You have to be aware of that. So it's uh, just have to be aware that there is buggies. And um, if you're not prepared for the buggies, you'll, you'll just cough you off guard. So if you cough off guard, um, you're, there's a good chance that you might not sleep very well at night. Um, it took me a while to get used to it, um, especially if it rains. Uh, the other one as well too, um, the, 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 the lot or the site itself can get very wet. Uh, wet in a way that um, it can get um, puddles. You'll get tons of puddles, like a lot of puddles. So if you're not prepared to have puddles in your campsite, this is not a best place for you to go to. Reason why is um, is they're just un the, the, there's a lot of divots on the um, there's a lot of divots on the on the on the site. So if if you have something like for example um, uh, like a like a I don't know it's hard to describe it. It's it's like an uphill to get into your site. So theoretically everything's supposed to flow out, right? Um, but unfortunately, if you if you don't have it, uh, if your if your site has a divot in, like for example, where the fire pit is, you will have flooding. Um, I had flooding. Like you can literally see the flooding on my site on my site because of um, what you call it. Uh, the fire pit itself is below the rest of the level, uh, rest of the ground. So um, so everything pulls in like when i left when i just left the area of the um of the fire pit is still wet it's like damp that's why it's so hard to um to cook using fire because you just don't have enough um dry area right uh if you do have a dry area uh it's it damps again, especially if it's a moist. If it's very moist outside, it can be very damp. And if it gets damp, you're just tracking muds all over the place. I've been literally cleaning my shoes, my my flip flops, and my sandals constantly uh, for that one. So if you are planning to come here, come here during the summer months, not spring or fall, because you just have to be. You're just gonna get wet, so just be prepared for that. Uh, also, there's none. There's no pave roads here but as soon as you walk as soon as you get into the park everything is gravel so if you don't have if your car is very is very low you will scrape it uh, you will get um, there's gonna be a lot of rocks flying over the place so that's that uh, also the one I also want to mention is the the park itself is very clean very well maintained like incredibly well maintained so if you're planning to um, to come here um, don't worry about it it's very clean i'm very very happy with the cleanliness of this place uh it's it's lovely to be honest with you i really really enjoy this area and um i can't wait to come back i am coming back here but this time i'm gonna come back during the summer months not uh not spring or fall because it's just too much too much to deal with a lot of debris uh just it's just wet it's just incredibly wet so it's not um ideal you know what i mean um i'd rather come here a non um uh, wet season because if you go here during the wet season uh it just gets really crappy you know what i mean so uh what i definitely suggest if you're gonna plan to come here definitely recommend going don't come here during the winter, uh, during the uh, during uh, the wet season and all that good stuff. But uh, overall, you're gonna you're gonna have fun. I will uh, do a proper review of this park in a, in a different episode just to go through it and all that good stuff, um, all the pros and cons and all that good uh, all that good stuff because uh, there is a lot of things that this park has that some parks don't have. And I'm very very happy that I came here. I'm glad that I found this place because I want to try places that I've never been before. So this is it. This is one of them. So thank you. Thank you very much for um, for joining me here at Camping with Lenny. I really do appreciate you guys are listening to me. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm in YouTube.
uh, and uh, you can actually listen to this podcast on YouTube as well too and also all the apps that you uh, listen to your podcast everything from Amazon to Spotify you name it I'm there also visit me at Instagram uh, my Instagram account too at camping with Lenny there you'll find photos as well I just started that uh, that account so you'll get more photos coming up soon and um, check out uh, www.campingmidlane.com there you'll find more details about upcoming shows and future live streams yes I'm doing live streams and I'll be ans- I'll be answering all your questions regarding first time campers and there's a lot of ends and I'll be live stream uh, I'll be potentially live streaming in camp as well too depending on internet accessibility but uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll catch you next time here at camping with Lenny mm-hmm.